Banks. Yep. Go right into questions. We got a mic to you. Let's we'll start with Jimmy. Uh, Coach, you had a number of uh, tip passes against Pittsburgh. Is that coincidence? Is it emphasis? What what led to that? Yeah, I like to think it's emphasis. You know, we've been working really hard, you know, um, since two days, just since camp, so to speak, you know, and making sure, obviously, we love to be able to hit the quarterback as much as we can, but there are going to be some opportunities where we can't get there, but we still can get our hands up. And I thought for the most part, you know, the front did a good job getting their hands up, you know, and even some of the pressure guys that were blitzing getting their hands up. So, yeah, we like to think, you know, some of the habits start to show up on the games based on what we have been doing, you know, since fall camp. Do you chart that? How many tips you Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we keep track of that now. You know, a lot of the D-line, you know, they, they feel like they DBs in terms of their PBUs. So um, they're, they're taking a lot of pride in it. You know, again, obviously you love to be able to pressure the quarterback, but, you know, if they're getting the ball out, you know, in a hurry, you know, we still got to have the ability to affect them. And one way to do that is by getting their hands up. Vince, then Rob. Tim, obviously a lot of QB pressures in that game. Can you talk about that aspect, how happy you were, and then the balance between getting the pressure from your front versus some blitzes? Yeah, I mean, we, we always want to be able to apply as much pressure as we can, you know, regardless of opponent. Um, we obviously felt good, you know, just what you just mentioned. It wasn't always just pressure, you know, sometimes, excuse me, blitz. Sometimes it was just our four-man. So um, everything we do starts with our get-off up front, you know, and obviously the more we can get to the quarterback, the more we can get him off his spot, the better it is for us in the long run. So I thought the D-line did a tremendous job of, you know, understanding that. And again, we talked about the tip balls, you know, obviously affecting them that way. And then obviously they're still the balance of bringing some pressure when need be. So uh, we thought we had a pretty good um, idea of what, what we were going to get, you know, and I thought the guys executed the game plan extremely well. Uh, obviously, you know, with the way Coach Heupel coaches and the you know, guys like Hooker and stuff, the offense gets all kinds of pub. But Tennessee just won a game on Saturday where they, the offense scored three points. How much pride does your side of the ball take in that? What does that say about the growth from the defense? Yeah, I'm going to be really honest, you know, and not try to give you any coach speak. You know, I, I didn't even realize what the point was. You know, we, we feel like we got a job to do, you know, and that's to go out there and stop them. You know, every chance we step on the field, you know, I – I'm very rarely on Twitter that way. You know, I don't read those things, and, you know, I really talk the same way to the defense. So, you know, we, we have one of the best, you know, most prolific offenses in the country. We know that. You know, we obviously have a lot of pride in what we do on defense as well. But we don't get into, you know, how many points they scored or didn't score, or things of that nature. We just know any time we get a chance to, you know, have a positive impact on the game, you know, that's what we're trying to do. And we're obviously fortunate enough to have a positive impact this, this, this Saturday. Adam, then Ben. <laughs> uh, Turnage and Charles both not getting a lot of snaps this past week. What what will get them on the field? Yeah, I, I mean, again, you know, it wasn't necessarily the goal not to play those guys. You know, we felt like um, the corners that were in, you know, were doing a, you know a pretty good job. Um, you know, in hindsight, you know, you would like to have gotten Charles in maybe a, a couple more snaps, you know, just because of the, the amount of snaps we ended up playing at the corner position. Um, but the reality of it is, I've said since day one, you know, all those guys get what they deserve. You know, Turner's just working extremely hard, you know, but so is Kamal, you know, so is Burrell. You know, all those guys are working. So um, the thing we talk about a lot is just being ready when your name is called. And I know those guys will be ready when the opportunity presents itself. And in the secondary, how do you balance the value of guys that don't give up busted plays, that don't give up big plays, versus guys that are aggressive and can make plays? How do you balance those two things? Well, it ain't just the secondary. We balance that all over the defense. You know, everybody has a job to do. You know, we talk about earning trust, you know, playing with obviously great um, um, continuity and consistency. And the reality of it is we want guys to make plays. We want guys to be aggressive, you know, but not at the expense of doing our job. So... Um, we think you can do both. We think you can have it all, you know, and the guys that are showing um, the ability to do that are the guys that will get the lion's share of the reps. Tim, what have you seen from your backers through two games and just what do you see in the biggest difference between Aaron Beasley so far this year compared to last year? I, I think he's playing with a lot more confidence. You know, again, I, I know I've said this before, but, you know, um, you know, he was new to it. You know, it, it wasn't a lot on his um, – you know, he wasn't really on our radar, so to speak, when we took the job last year. But, you know, he ended up being a starter for us. You know, we thought got better as the season progressed last year. And we thought he picked up where he left off. So he just has a, a lot more command of the defense at this point. Um, he, he's playing extremely aggressive. You know, he's being physical at the point of attack. 
Um, I really can't say enough good things about him. You know, I really like the direction he's headed. Um, you know, B Banks is obviously, you know, a guy who's a high energy guy who plays extremely hard. Um, you know, he's still, you know, continue to, you know, to work through the details, which I know is important to him. And I think you'll see him start to ascend too as, as the season starts to go on. Patrick, Coach, uh, Wesley Walker hasn't started, but he's played a lot these first few games. What, what have you been getting from him, and, and how do you kind of expect that dynamic with him and Tamarian to, to continue moving forward? Yeah, I think it's good. You know, we think we have a pretty good one-two punch there, you know, between those guys. And, you know, Wes is pretty savvy. You know, he's a guy who's, you know, has played some football, you know, coming from his previous spot. So uh, he's smart. You know, he's still learning the minor details within our defense. But, um, you know, he, the, the moment is not too big for him. You know, he, he plays good in the run game, uh, shows the ability to go out and cover. Um, we, we feel like between him and T-Mac, you know, we feel like we got a really good, you know, set of guys there that can help us win. Yeah. Coach, with, with as, as aggressive as you are up front, whether a lot of times with the blitzes, what's the marriage with the back end, particularly for like hot route slants, those types of things? How is that marriage, and do you think that needs to be tighter, or do you like what you're seeing in terms of how those the, the front and the back are kind of blending together and playing together? Yeah, I mean, it's, you, you know, it's a two-game sample. You know, we'll obviously continue to work through it. I thought we were better than we were the game before. You know, we like to think we'll be better going into the, you know, game three. So, you know, there's always room for improvement, you know, but I think at the end of the day, you know, the tighter coverage you can play, the better you are up front, the better you are up front, the, the tighter the coverage will be. All those things go hand in hand. Um, but our identity, obviously, is we are a pressure team. You know, we're going to continue to pressure, you know, whether it's bringing five, six, you know, whether it's 3D, whether it's man, you know, et cetera. So, obviously, we can expect the ball to come out quicker than, you know, maybe against some other opponents. And with that being said, Said, we got to obviously be able to take advantage of it with tighter coverage when it's appropriate. Hey, Coach, what did you feel like the biggest difference between week one and week two was with, uh, you know, getting hits on the quarterback, getting sacks on the quarterback? Yeah, like I said, every game's a new, a different game. You know, every offense has a different approach. You know, um, I said it earlier, you know, you guys asked, you know, the ball came out extremely quick, you know, against the first opponent we had. Um, these guys, you know, wanted to push the ball down the field a little bit more, so they held it. Um, but they obviously mixed in some three-step as well. So um, it, it's just depending on who you're playing, you know, and what their philosophy is. Ours isn't going to change. You know, we're always going to try to apply pressure at every point we can. Now, how we do that, you know, is, is subject to game plan. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we want to apply pressure every chance we get. And, you know, based on schematics or what they're trying to do, you know, sometimes it'll show up a little bit more in the stat sheets. Hey, Coach, kind of piggybacking off of that one, I know the goal is to always win and help the team win and make a positive impact on defense. But is there any specific area you're looking from the group to grow from this past week against Akron? Yeah, um, I, I think just being able to, you know, be consistent, you know, in everything that we do. You know, we don't, we don't want to be a team that's, you know, high one week, low the next week. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, who we're playing, you know, whether it's the first game, second game, third game. We want to have the same approach with our process, you know, how we prepare and how we get ready for these guys. And, you know, I'd be extremely disappointed if, if we didn't, you know, uphold our, our um, standard in terms of how we prepare. And um, it obviously started yesterday, you know, and bled over into today, you know, and then we'll need another good days of work tomorrow, you know. So I think right now just understanding what our process is and holding true to it is the biggest thing I want to make sure those guys are accomplishing. And a quick follow-up. Oh, sorry. Trey Flowers, uh, he had a couple of miscues against Pitt, but he also recovered very well, made some big plays. Can you speak to his growth? Yeah, I think it's, you know, a sign of maturity because there were, just like they're in life, you know, there are going to be some ups and some downs and how you handle it, you know, will determine, you know, where you go from there. And I thought, um, you know, he didn't panic. He didn't drop his head. You know, he stayed the course, you know, and he obviously, you know, made some key plays down the stretch, you know, to give us an opportunity to win. Last two questions, Wes and Jim. Tim, I think Pitt got more than half of its rushing yards on that one kind of big splash play early. What what sort of went wrong on that play? Where was the breakdown or, or breakdowns? And, and other than that, what made the, the run defense so effective? Yeah, um, you know, we, we just had a misfit. You know, the reality of it is, and, you know, that's typically how it always is. Very rarely is, 
you know, with teams just, just beat you. Usually you beat yourself, and unfortunately we beat ourselves on that particular play. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you know, as much pressure as we want to be able to inflict, um, which is in our DNA, you know, also being able to stop the run. You got to be able to make teams one-dimensional best you can. You know, again, how you do that, whether it's games, whether it's pressure, you know, et cetera. But we don't want to allow guys to run the ball, you know, so we're going to do everything in our power to try to um, negate the run game. And, you know, we're very fortunate to be able to do this, do that last week. Tim, you knocked out the starting quarterback, played against the second string quarterback the second half. Do you change your defensive approach based on going from one quarterback to the next, or do you go in with the same game plan and say, hey, this is what we've got drawn up and it doesn't matter who the quarterback is? Yeah, the, the core values of what you want to do, whether it's stopping a run, how we want to pressure, doesn't change. But the reality of it is, you know, what kind of quarterback is he? You know, what does he do well? Um, our scouting department does a tremendous job of preparing us, you know, and going through their personnel, you know, week by week. You know, what we can expect when this running back's in the game, what can we expect this tight end, and the quarterbacks are no different. So uh, we have a thought process, you know, on what we think his strengths and weaknesses are, and uh, we try to, you know, attack them accordingly. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah.